Um, welcome back to the podcast today. We have a very special guest, Alejandro Antonio Ruiz, uh, the voice of <laughs> Gecko. Sometimes those names get me scared. <laughs> no, no, you got it. You got okay. it. That's, that's one of the better pronunciations I've heard. <laughs> oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you. Like I said, the voice of Gecko. I do uh, want to start out with just how are you doing today? I'm good. I ate, which I don't always do. So it's already a win for me. Like I've accomplished a lot in my day with that. <laughs> yes. Um, so small yeah, victories. No, yeah, you gotta count them when you when you get them. Yes. But yeah, I ate, and uh, it's been a slow slow day of like answering business emails. So mm. it's a good day. Yeah. How about you? How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It's always great to to get to. I just talked to the Ray's voice actor yesterday. Oh um, damn! And I had what a great you? conversation with her, and then today I get to do this, and so I'm just I'm in I'm in heaven right now. I'm I'm having a fantastic time. The fact that you managed to get a hold of her like that uh, that alone is impressive. Yeah, that's so. my second second time actually. I've had her on before, and we did another one. So I mean, she's fantastic. So no, I mean yeah. she's she's busy for a reason. Uh huh. She's yeah, and she just put out uh, put out a movie today. Yeah, yeah. I and I, so. I've been watching that today, so... Um, yeah, it's been a good day. It's been a good day. Um, I, I do... I don't know a whole lot about you. And so, mm -hmm. there is a... There is a... As an interviewer, I want to do my research, but at the same time, as a fan, I want to have this conversation with you and get to know you through my own curiosity. Um, so, can you take me... When, when did you start voice acting and why? So I've been a full-time voice actor for, uh, I want to say, seven or eight years now. Um, but I've, I've been an actor most of my life. I started out in theater and film, and mm -hmm. I still do them occasionally. Not as much anymore. Um, because I transitioned into voiceover because there was more work. People were honestly offering more stuff. And, uh, you know, at, at the time, it's starting to change a little bit. But at the time, there wasn't much work for Latin American actors in theater or film. Mm -hmm. um, and it just so happens that in voiceover, you know, you have the freedom of this not getting in the way of all the different kinds of characters you can play. Um, so I, I kind of made that shift and it snowballed. I mean, I never went into it like, oh, I want to be a, a voice actor. I admired them from afar ever since I was a kid. I've loved watching the work of voice actors. Mm -hmm. It just never felt like a real possibility for me until it was there, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think that... Um... I think it's really interesting to hear uh, what what do you so you're first starting out as a performer like with, whether it's on stage or on screen do you do you still like do you prefer one over over the other or do they both have their their likes in your eyes? I mean, at this point, I'm I'm pretty all in on voiceover <laughs> <laughs> just because I love I love the people. There, there's like. At least in my experience, not to you know shade the other mediums, yeah. but there are no egos in voiceover. Hmm. Your engineers, your directors, your producers, your writers, like everyone is just so nice. I, at least I haven't had an experience yet where where any, any of that's been negative. So it's just really even the actors, like there's no prima donnas. <laughs> Everyone's just so down to earth, hmm. and and I love that about it. Um, before I think what I loved about theater was like the immediate engagement of like you know you can see a person's reaction in the moment mm -hmm. uh for me i mean i it's it's basically the same experience now it's just delayed and i have to wait you know eight to ten months to a year or more until mm -hmm. i get to see what people think about my work mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah i mean it's it's all the same thing for me it's it's acting at its core yeah yeah i think that i think that as a consumer more than like obviously i've never done voiceover or anything like that but i What's made me this dive more into voice acting, I there is a lot of people who do give you know give people their flowers when it comes to voiceover work, but like I don't feel like it's enough. Like I feel like mm -hmm. people think that it's a lot of just delivering lines and stuff like that. And but you can especially with these in depth characters like Gecko, like that has this backstory, and you're finding the voice and you're getting into that mindset. There is that that is acting, and it's called voice acting for a reason. <laughs> you know, you're putting on a performance and a good one at that, like a very good one with Gecko, I to say. Um, so 
do you do you feel the same way or do you still feel the love in the same way i mean i i've felt more of the love to be honest mm. from from the voice acting uh, fandom as it were because um you know it's it's one thing when a, a handful of people come up to you after a show or after a play it's another thing when you're getting messages from people in mexico and thailand and the philippines mm. online yeah it's not in person but the love is still there it's someone who took a moment out of their day to like share something maybe vulnerable with you um which is kind of beautiful in its own way um i will say though i do love what what i love about voice acting is the anonymity like i can go around and not be noticed and unless someone recognizes my voice where it's sitting in that day if it sounds like a particular mm -hmm. character then then you know I, I can just live my life with a bit of privacy and that's something that i cling to <laughs> And I hope continues, you know, I hope my, my career continues to expand, but I hope that the privacy is still something I get to keep intact. Yeah, I feel like that even even the, the someone recognizing your voice is like kind of dipping your toes into the water in like a good way. Like you get that that, you know, that maybe it's once a month or once a week or something like that. And it's not <laughs> very often, but you still get that cool feeling of like, oh, that like was a, awesome. A healthy dose. Of yeah, rather yeah. Than like overwhelmed exactly um when so talking uh about gecko um when first developing or like first getting into that character um like the audition process i do i'm curious on the timeline from just give me a short answer of when did you like find out you're getting the or like start recording to to when it came out and i want to know how long you had to wait yeah, yeah. Um, so the very, very first audition was, I want to say early August of last year. Um, because I remember it being around my birthday. Oh, wait, when's, and, when's your birthday? Because I'm uh, also August. August 9th. Or, oh, I'm August 12th. So close. close, close. We're both yeah. Leos. Yes. Um, and, uh, and I auditioned and it was like just, you know, regular through my agents. They sent me like all coded information mm -hmm. not with, with not much detail. Um, I spent some time in this booth, actually, uh, recording a couple of hours, fine tuning the audition that I wanted to send. Uh, two or three weeks later, got a callback uh, and that was an in-person callback, one of many in-person callbacks because um, I was auditioning for a while. And, uh, and I didn't get, I don't think I got the official, official go ahead until like fall, maybe October, okay. late October, I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and we worked on it and worked on it. And, uh, and obviously he was announced in March. And how, how was that the, uh, what, what, what was, what was told to you to find your voice for, for the character? Like, was there any like certain like big bullet points that brought out the voice in your head? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they gave me a pretty general uh, breakdown like any other uh, acting audition for voiceover. Um, you know, I think what was important to them was that he sounded like where he's from, which mm -hmm. is East L.A., um, that he sounded youthful, that he sounded unrehearsed and just kind of off the cuff and and chill for the most part. Um, and you know they they give like a little not bio because they don't give you all the details right up front mm -hmm. but um but little like cornerstones and like things that you can latch on to as an actor that might help you get closer to what they're looking for um and and like some initial concept art that looks nothing like <laughs> what the character ends up looking like because mm -hmm. he goes through, you know and all of these characters have gone through so many evolutions yeah before they actually get released um what in your eyes, do you do you have things that you resonate with Gecko as a character and your personality? Yeah, a lot. I think there's a lot of overlap, which is very rare for me in terms of characters that I play. Um, but you know, it starts with where he's from, his ethnicity, uh, his age or the age range, um, his his demeanor. I think I brought a lot of myself to him mm -hmm. that that wasn't there on the page. Um, and uh, and there's like a there's a thing in me that that I think comes across in the character, which is like no matter how tough shit gets, you gotta laugh at it. You gotta be able to like smile through it and just be like, okay, that's what it is. Let's just let's do it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh, 
and I don't think that was there at first either. But, mm-hmm. but I think I think over time it developed. Yeah, I, th- I think with something like that, you can't you can't have such a um, kind of like hard head as someone who's writing a character and also letting that voice like the voice actor, you know, fill in the blanks a little bit and bring out a lot of what they have into the character. I mean, the folks at Riot, like credit to them, they I'm sure you've heard it from all the voice actors mm-hmm. already, but like they're wonderful people to work with. They they gave me so much freedom and it so many sessions just felt like I was showing up to play. Mm-hmm. And and I remember like early on feeling cuz I improvise a lot, like a lot. And I think it came across in some of Gecko's lines cuz you know, some of them feel a little bit like why what is that doing there? <laughs> um but I I improvised a lot of stuff and you know, they kept some of it, some of it, they didn't keep other parts, but they gave me the freedom to do that. And I, I remember early on telling them like, is this, is this okay? Like, are you, are you guys okay with me? Like adding shit? <laughs> uh, and they were like, no, 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 give, 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 give everything <laughs> that you want. And I was like, okay, you asked for it. Um, we're, we're like, um, like the dialect of like how you say things is that stuff that you would improvise or are you like adding words or what it, what's like what do you all mean of it i mean like uh the spanglish was a big was mostly me mm-hmm. um there was some of it there were some uh spanish words because the the writing team was really good they 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 had uh annie chable who is a wonderful person who works at riot who was helping to write the character um who is themselves Latin American from LA uh, was able to kind of get them started off on the right foot um, but is not as familiar with Spanish as I was because I grew up speaking it Mm -hmm. so they kind of said you know just feel free to throw out say it how you would say it or say it Mm -hmm. how you think he would say it Um, so a lot of the Spanglish a lot of the switching languages uh, in the middle of a sentence um, a lot a lot of the improvised jokes um, and there were like entire lines that I that I gave them during the first or second audition that made it all the way into the game, which is just wild to me because that's like, that came out of my head, not yeah. theirs. Yeah. It's gotta be a cool feeling for you. It is. It's just like, Oh shit. You really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how you said you improvise a lot. Um, how, how do you get comfortable doing that? Cause for me, I feel like I would have, like I throw out ideas and stuff. Right. But like, I, I'm even, like kind of afraid to do that but like a whole line i feel like like (laughs) improving that is like that's got to be you know making you feel real comfortable in the booth and just being like i'm just gonna do it i mean that's that's part of what it is because i mean i'll be honest like the jitters i still get the jitters sometimes Mm -hmm. i still get nervous sometimes um i still get moments in the booth where i can get overwhelmed but it's about being able to just acknowledge it and say it like hey guys can i just take a sec because like i'm kind of in my head right now just give me a breather real quick and and you got to kind of just accept it and move through it um in terms of improv like that's a big part of of trust i think like being able to trust that they mean what they say when they say it's okay for you to just spitball throw whatever out you want you know um and just go for it and i think I've, over the last few years, I've worked really hard as an actor to let go of the feeling like everything needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And that helps a lot because then it's just like, my job isn't to get it right. My job is to give them options. Absolutely. Um, But, you know, it's a muscle that you train. And and I I was lucky enough to do a lot of improv in theater. I mean, I used to do a lot of what's called Commedia dell'arte, which is like uh, Italian clowning, basically, (laughs) when I was really little. So you'd be you'd be improvising an entire play for like two hours. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's the wild stuff. It's like <laughs> you know, Italian theater people. So when you're like, when you get the the like go ahead that you get Gecko, are you? I'm curious now about like the the feeling. Like, are you really anxious when you're going in for that first session of recording lines and stuff? Yeah, ironically, I I wasn't anxious during the auditions when I went in. Like this was probably the first one of the first audition processes where I walked into the like final callback or whatever it's called. I don't I didn't even keep track of how many there were. But I walked in thinking like you got this. Like I remember actually putting a note in my phone that said like you have the job. 
Mm. Just, do the, just do the job. Mm. Uh, like because, because it was the first time that I walked in and that I read a character and I was like, I know this guy. He's my brother. He's me. He's my mm. friends. He's the people I grew up around. Like, I know his head. Um, but yeah, it's like once once it was official official, once it was like, oh, you got it. And the, then all of a sudden the team expands and you've not just got the director and like a couple casting people. You've got the director, producers, casting people, like a huge team listening in. Those first few lines, yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, oh shit, let's do this, like, we'll see. Yeah, I, I mean, I imagine, when, when was, like, when do you find out it's Valorant? Like, when do you find out, like, when are you, because did you know Valorant before, are you doing, like, a whole bunch of research? Like, I knew Valorant before, um, I, I learned pretty quickly, I think I actually knew before they told me, mm. just because I, I felt like I recognized the concept art style oh okay yeah and uh and I, I had my suspicions i wasn't sure but i knew of valorant because i'm friends with vanille velasquez Ooh. who was his neon yeah and so when neon came out i was really excited for her and then when i saw this i was like is this what i think it is let's see and i started you know through the callbacks i was like oh shit this is this is what i think it is and mm. now i have to keep a secret from my friend for like ah. a month but she she was excited when I told her, you know, eight months later or nine <laughs> months later or whatever. I always I always love to hear the stories of uh, like how long people have to wait because it just seems like a crazy concept to me of like doing work and then just having to sit with it. That's I mean that's what we do though. Like me and mm -hmm. my buddies, at least a couple of my friends here in LA who are also voice actors, all of us have like a notes app on our uh, a note in our phone through the app. Um, I just sounded like an old man. <laughs> All of us have a note in our phone that has like a list of like, these are the ones I can talk about. These are the ones I can't talk about yet. Mm. So like we, we like keep track of it for ourselves because there's just so much stuff. And sometimes you wait a year or two before something came, comes out. Mm -hmm. I know there is there's one thing in my career that I had to keep a secret for a while. And I when the person told me, they're like, you could tell your mom because I know people <laughs> have to tell someone. So tell your mom and that's it. And I'm like, okay, mom, you have to listen to this because I have to tell someone. But I think I think that's the case for a lot of people where it's like they have to have that one person that they otherwise it's just when it's pent up, it's almost like it's worse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think uh I think the only person that knew was probably my mom, yeah. Actually. <laughs> See, it like, works. Same, it same. works. Mom, moms will keep a secret and they'll take it to the grave. Yeah, because they well first it was like, because she didn't know what was going on, and who is she going to tell? Well, that too. That too. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you don't even have social media. Mom. Yeah. Fine. Like, you're not going to tell anyone. I love that. I love that. Um, uh, so, finding finding a voice of a character, how how is that process for you? Like, um, especially because in, in an audition, I feel like you, you maybe have an idea but do you mostly have to come up with that yourself or is someone trying to give you a direction? So this process was a little bit different for me um, because he is so much closer to my natural voice. Excuse me, um, burping. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm very informal. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, <laughs> but it was a little bit different for me because um, because he is closer, I, and because I, I feel like I already had such a good idea, given the dialect, given the age range, given his personality, kind of what he would sound like, I would say that after I got the job, it was just like tweaking. It was little <laughs> things. It was uh, pitch and tone and, you know, get, getting, you know, he's, he sounds a little bit higher pitched than I do uh, when I'm naturally speaking. Uh, I think my voice, when I'm naturally speaking, uses a little bit more of the lower end sometimes. Um, and I do enhance the accent just a little bit more because I treat him like someone who has never left this area. Whereas I grew up here, still am here, but I've left for years at a time at many points, mm -hmm. um, which can kind of change the way that you speak. Um, but yeah, I, I think in this case, it was like fine tuning. Normally it's a much more involved process for other kinds of projects where like, you know, I go in with something and you, you turn in an audition, but really they just want to see if you can act. And then you get to the session, they're like, we love what you did, but let's do this instead. 
Mm-hmm. And you as an actor have to be flexible enough to, to just go with it. Yeah. Um, in this case, I think there was a lot of trust from them on my part, like right off the bat, because because uh, I walked in and even during that in-person callback was already improvising and saying like, can I do it this way? Because I don't think he'd say it like that. So I think that boldness uh, kind of caught them off guard and they were like, oh shit, like it was a bit more collaborative then. It wasn't so much them telling me like, this is what he should sound like. Yeah, because I feel like um, what I've heard from talking to voice actors and stuff, like there is maybe two types of auditions. Like you would want to do, you could do like what you think the director wants to have and then, or like the casting or what, like flip flop it. Like you think, I'm trying to, wow, I'm blanking on this, but like. Oh, you're good, you're good. Uh, like what they want versus what you think that they want, like you know, like or give them what they don't know they want. That's yeah, I, I, that's that's the better way to put it. Yeah. Actually, it's like what you want that they might not know they want. Yeah, because they might and not I, have that idea yet. I think that was the case for me and Gecko, to be honest, because like it sounds like a pretty straightforward voice, but and I can't confirm this for certain because I haven't really talked mm-hmm. to them about it, and I don't. You know, I, I'm not going to go and ask every single person on the team, <laughs> but I got the impression that I walked in with something they weren't expecting mm. because, you know, you've seen the art, the official artwork for Gecko. He's pretty badass. He's pretty edgy looking, and he, he certainly has that that kind of undercurrent to him. But I walked in, and I kind of gave them a version of him that was a little bit more open-hearted and a little bit more humorous and chill and just kind of like surprisingly golden retriever esque <laughs> and i think that caught them off guard um for me at least crafting that the reason i went in with that is because the portrayals of mexican american men particularly in media that i've seen have always been that front like public facing like cold emotionless like just hard guys mm-hmm. and who uh, who tend to be like criminals or delinquents or things like that, uh, gang members, you know, if you look at movies. Yeah. And uh, and while that reality exists and the space for that reality exists, there's also the complexity of like, who are those guys when they're at home? Who are those guys when they're with their friends, their girlfriends, their loved ones? Um, they're usually the jokesters who are really lovable. And I walked in with like, no, how would he treat the other Valorant team members? Like, how would he, he he would be jovial with them. He would be like a bit more chill with them. And I don't think they expected that. Mm. And uh, and they brought a lot more humor to the character than I think they originally uh, may have intended. What What does it mean to you to like be able to represent like you and your history and your culture in in the way that is a positive light like what does that mean for you to to do this character i mean it was huge it was huge when when i first officially officially got it because and i don't think it sank in until the first session to be honest Mm -hmm. um i had to kind of put my own personal feelings aside during the first session because i remember right before we started recording they showed me some concept art which i hadn't seen before and it was some of it, I think, that's been posted publicly at this point. Um, it was a black and white uh, expression sheet mm-hmm. with a bunch of different facial expressions of geckos. And one of them, he was hugging Wingman. Mm-hmm. And Wingman's like pushing him away, like like a, almost like a little dog or something that doesn't want to be loved on. But Gecko's expression was just pure tenderness, pure joy, pure love. And I realized in that moment, like, I have never seen this version of a Mexican, Mexican American character in the media ever i've never seen like all the guys are always this like like macho machista kind of like rough and tumble kind of guy and he has that for sure but it made me realize in that moment like oh we're doing something that's dimensional we're doing something that has depth these are like real people and um whether or not that lore gets shared whether or not that story gets told that's not mine to tell Mm -hmm. but it made me realize like oh shit this is big like yeah this is the potential to tell a different kind of story well also when when finding that that voice and being able to bring that character to life the things that 
that aren't necessarily being told to you and then but then you have up for interpretation of like how he was brought up and i love what you when you said that when you like heard the like found out who the character was that it's your brother it's you it's all these people around you i love that that's that more like that's so cool to me that you get a feel like you're bringing you know a part of someone you know like oh that's that's him or whatever the case may be I there's, love a, there's a lot of my brother in in, in gecko i have mm-hmm. a younger brother he's not too much younger but I I was always the more responsible one growing up, and my brother's an absolute lovable mess, <laughs> and and so I brought a lot of that. I like I tend to I, d- I tend to play a lot of messy, lovable characters. <laughs> yeah. uh, I myself am a very organized, like chill person. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, it was nice to kind of draw inspiration from just people I knew and just the humor of of my culture because I think that's important too. Like. I felt like there was a bit of humor lacking uh, in the original concept, mm-hmm. and uh, and that kind of humor is so important to Mexican American culture here in LA and just Mexican culture in general. I mean, it's a generalization, but but in most cases, I've heard from other people who share that ancestry. You know, if we love you, we're gonna make fun of you, <laughs> and that's just how it is. And <laughs> and I needed to bring that humor to the page. Yeah absolutely um how did you feel about the the reaction to gecko uh, like from launch uh it was a giant relief because <laughs> i was anxious out of my mind <laughs> i didn't get to say anything until a few days after uh his his trailer dropped i think but uh but when he was announced uh, i think it was at vct right mm, yeah i believe so yeah yeah in Brazil, mm. uh, I saw that audience response, and mm. uh, I was like, "Holy shit, they're going wild!" As soon as Wingman appeared, they went wild. I was like, "It was just a wave of relief," because I I was anxious about the fact that he's another Latin American agent, or like I guess the first Latin American agent. The other agents are from their you know respective nations, mm-hmm. but uh, but there was a bit of anxiety about that of like, oh, you know, how are they going to feel? It's another like spanish speaker you know and he's from the u.s and he's the child of immigrants so he's not really one or the other culture he's kind of in between um so yeah i was just surprised and relieved and glad that that people loved seemed to love him right off the bat oh yeah i think that uh so do you know like oh like tomorrow's the day that things are like are you aware that things is going to be announced or like um, they, they gave me a heads up just because I need to know when I'm legally allowed mm. as an actor mm-hmm. to, to announce that, you know, cause you know, we, we, we've got our NDAs and we want to take things the way that they prefer to, uh, you know, procedurally announce these things. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, as soon as I got the heads up, like, okay, you're good to go. I was like, yes, I'm going <laughs> to post it everywhere. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, they, they give you a heads up. Oh, I was on a search for, I was like on the deep parts of the internet yeah. waiting for someone to be like, I think I know that voice. So uh, there were only two people that guessed it. Both of them are voice actors. Both of them are friends of mine. In, this, in, in the space between that first trailer dropping and then me being able to announce, which I think was like two or three days in between. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them was Vanille. Oh, really? Actually, um, but another one is a buddy of mine who lives out in Las Vegas, who's a voice actor, uh, Luis Bermudez, who uh, is going to be in the next Street Fighter game. Ooh, Street yeah. Fighter. Yeah, he's he's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, they both sent me messages and were like, is this, he sounds a little, are we, because if it's not you, it should be you, because he's Mexican American, right? If he's not you, it should be you. That's, That's what great. they both said. <laughs> That's so great. But overall, you feel like you you were happy with how everyone perceived it and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I I was happy with it. I mean, I I also love, by the way, because again, like there's there's nothing more Latin American than making jokes at the expense of someone that you like. <laughs> and so as soon as the as soon as he released, and I saw like all the memes, all the jokes, all the comparisons to like all these actual celebrities. I was like loving it. I was saving all these different memes and like 
I, th- I think I saw the the Eminem one of the hair and stuff like yep. that. And yeah, and Frank Ocean. Oh, Frank Ocean, yeah. Like, there were there were so many wonderful ones. Uh, are you uh, uh, are you on Valorant TikTok yet? Are you getting lots of Valorant TikToks um, on your for you page? I joined TikTok just before um, announcing, mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah, that has been blowing up slowly over the course of the last couple of weeks. So. Uh, you know, lots of requests for Riot Gum Buddies. Ah, like, my like, favorite. Like you do. <laughs> and, and lots of very patient and kind responses telling people, like, I do not have the power. <laughs> yeah, you just have to take a step back and be like, oh, this, is yeah. my, this is my 18th response in the last yeah. hour to someone asking. Well, I, you know, and, and I'm sure it was a hard time getting a hold of me because, like I said, like, so many messages mm. like i'm not used to that at all yeah. I, I i was pretty like that's another overlap between me and gecko is like i can leave my phone somewhere and disconnect from the world and just be you know off grid for a long time i lose mm-hmm. track of time like that um so it, it was just an, it's a new thing to me that i'm still getting used to that like the messages will come in pretty regularly mm-hmm. if anyone at all i don't know why they would be curious but my process when a new Valorant agent is released is to try to be the first one, which I never am, but I try <laughs> to be the first one to message them because I know what's going on. Because if I, be a lot. yeah, because if I can message you, then everyone else can too. So, yeah. um, but right away, I'm surprised it was Twitter. I, I, I do want to ask you why, why was it the Twitter DM that you answered? Um, Twitter allows me to communicate with a lot of the people that I actually followed before all of the fame mm-hmm. stuff. And I say that like there's any fame. <laughs> but but like it, it it had a lot more of my colleagues and peers that I grew up working with. So I was already using that a little bit more. Um, and it's just like, it's the one that to me of all the other platforms, like I get to just kind of joke around and just be you know, a little bit more spontaneous with my humor, um, mm-hmm. which is also like a lot of words. Like there's a reason why Gecko talks so much because like, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, no, like Instagram, I don't use too, too much. Like yeah. I don't, I don't really post too many photos. Yeah, I don't post photos. Um, but I got your message on there. I don't think you sent me anything on TikTok uh, though. No, I didn't. Um, I, I did get a lot of messages. To The big thing is people telling me to get you so like yeah. i got a lot of messages on tiktok like gecko's gotta be next gecko's gotta be next so that's surprising yeah uh, people are gonna be excited about it i don't know i i'm curious uh, do you like scroll through tiktok at all like watching videos uh sometimes um more often than not i'm too busy like mm, yeah. unfortunately i mean it's like someone recently asked me like oh what what games are you playing recently and i'm like shit the most recent game i played it was probably like god of war ragnarok and that doesn't feel so recent anymore <laughs> um but you know it's it's like as soon as you start doing the work a lot more often you lose time to actually engage with people which mm-hmm. is you know it's a trade off yeah i mean you you want to be more busy but you know there's there's things that you want to do um I got a couple voice lines here for you. Oh, sure. But I do want to ask, what is the, what are you getting a lot? Like, what are people saying to you? What vo- gecko voice lines are coming in to your comments mm. and stuff? Um, let's see. In English, it's a lot of the alt lines. Um, some of the Spanglish stuff, like the pinche radio night line. Um, a huevo nice comes up a lot. Mm. Wait, so, um, so did you you did the Spanish version too? Yeah, yeah, I did oh. the the voice for Gecko in Latin America, not in Spain. Oh, okay. But yeah, I I also get a lot of Spanish voice line requests because in Spanish, we really leaned. I mean, like if you thought I let loose in English, in Spanish they were like, no, bring the memes, like all the topical <laughs> references, all the pop culture jokes. Like I was quoting Shrek. <laughs> really? I shit, I shit you not. Like there's there's a line from <laughs> Shrek in there. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, um, the, f- the, the couple that I have down, I, I honestly think they're all ult lines, or maybe not all of them, but, uh, the Oi Monster on the Loose. Mm-hmm. Let me adjust my game real quick. Yeah. That's the screen. Oh, yeah! 
Monster on the loose! <laughs> wow, your mic is really good, and it sounded very, very good right there. Thanks. It's uh, right here. You can't see it in frame, but my mic's right here. What do you? Are you like big into microphones, or do you? I am a gearhead. I mean, I love like I just ordered some new stuff that's not even like they're making a new microphone and a new audio interface for me that's not even gonna be ready until like December. What do you so, What are you yeah. using right now? Right now, you're hearing me through a Sennheiser uh, four sixteen. Okay. And I have a Neumann as well, which is back Ooh. here. I, oh, you can't see it either. It's not in frame. But I have a Neumann back here as well. Uh, I I love the Neumann. It's beautiful. I mean, I'm using this right now because, like, the house, I got all the windows open and I'm, like, airing out the house. It's a nice day. But uh, I'm in my booth, so you can't really hear anything just in case I was, like, something more directional, something that's just going to capture mm -hmm. my voice. I had a uh, pretty great conversation with when me and Gabe Kunda did, did our... Oh. Uh, and I was, we just sat here and talked about microphones for a second. You I was can like, talk gear all day. Yeah. He like yeah. pulled out like three different microphones. He's like, I got this one, I got this one. And I was just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, what, what is like a, a really common mic to use? And is there like one like industry standard that you, that everyone's using and like boosts and stuff? I mean, at this level, both of the mics that I'm using, probably. The Sennheiser is pretty common for people that don't have a very soundproof um, setup because it's so directional. It's a shotgun mic, usually mm. used outdoors. Um, but it's, it's also really good for, like, commercials and promos and things where your voice needs to cut through a mix. Um, and Neumann's, I have a Neumann TLM-103, um, which is also pretty standard at this level if you're working, like, in games or audiobooks things they need to capture like subtle little changes in the voice mm -hmm. um but you know everyone's at a different level and i certainly didn't start out with these mics yeah. i mean i start, i started with like electro voice re20s and um sure sm7b's yeah that's what i use right now is a sm7 good mic yeah great mic good podcasting and audiobook mic yeah um but uh but yeah it's like you just kind of build up as you see that the work comes in and requires it yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's I think it's important to note that you don't need like the best stuff to No. No. But, and in yeah. fact like this is this is something that takes years to yes. build and mm -hmm. it's not realistic to expect that right off the bat. Yeah. I did I was a uh, at the beginning of 2020 I was a videographer. Um I did a lot of videography. I did like weddings and um I did a fashion show. That was a crazy experience. <laughs> but um but that's that's where i get into like i love filmmaking and i love video i love cinematography um and then audio is kind of you know intertwined with it in some ways um so i just i just love hearing especially when someone's passionate about something and they love like gear and stuff i love hearing them <laughs> speak so yeah like i'm i'm the piece i'm waiting on actually is because like i want to be able to record on the road oh um, so I want to be able to take like my shotgun mic and maybe a couple of pieces of equipment and record really good auditions, like in a closet, in a, you know, hotel room or something, mm -hmm. just so that I can like get out of town sometimes, uh, and, and still be able to keep connected to my work. Yeah. I th I've i always seen those, um, like pop up, um, like booths and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Those Some cool. people use those. I've seen plenty of people just make like a makeshift thing out of like hotel pillows <laughs> and like, blankets and stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all you, little homie. Mm, that's the ally one. Mm. It's all you, little homie. <laughs> Your voice is fantastic. It is Thanks. amazing. Thanks. Um, do you. Do you have any personal favorites that you that you would like to? I think everyone on every different social platform has heard this one at one point. Okay. But it's my favorite, and I'll tell you the story after if you haven't oh. heard it already. Okay. But, uh, don't listen to her, Chamber. You look great. <laughs> I I need the story. I I haven't heard it. Yeah, it's uh, that line didn't have that pause in it ever on the page. Um, and that was the first take that I did. And I'm pretty sure it was written just as a pure compliment. Mm -hmm. Like it was meant to be nice, mm -hmm. 
but I don't know what about it. I was thinking about chamber. Like, I don't know what kind of headspace I was in and it came out awkward as fuck. <laughs> and, and I felt like I was insulting him, but everyone in the room started laughing. The directors, the producers, the writers, and the writers all agreed in that moment. Like, okay, that we have to use that one. <laughs> That's obviously. great. It's amazing. Um, so I, I accidentally insulted him and Hugo's such a sweet guy oh, and he knows the story. The best. Uh, but so now he loves the line too because it was an accidental insult. <laughs> uh, it's just like when you're when you're trying to be nice to your friend, but your friend clearly is dressed, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, questionably. Ah, uh, that's amazing. I love that. I love it. Um, I love the uh, plant the spike wing. Plant the spike wings. I think that's a good one too. Plant the spike wings. What what do you feel about Wingman? Do you do you um do you see all the the memes and stuff? Because I know my friends always is like, well, I do. I, I get sent them or tagged in them. Um, I, I love everyone. I mean, I've seen so many. The one where people are asking to give him a gun, <laughs> like <laughs> I love that one so much. Um, or like, there's this one where it's just Gecko's hand handing him the the, the gun. <laughs> Little wingman's got his little hands up, and it's just got a gecko little voice bubble that says, uh, "Go do a crime." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love Wingman. I mean, he's voiced by a buddy of mine, Kellen Goff, uh, who's who's just a wonderful voice actor who does a lot of anime. He's just a sweet, sweet guy, and uh, and wonderful creature voices as well, obviously. Mm, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I I love all his little critters. Yeah. Um. Blow him up, Mosh. Blow him up, Mosh. That one I had to guess on the intonation because that one I haven't heard in a while. Mm. I love. I love. Usually, you didn't do what usually happens when voice act. When I talk to the voice actors, they always warn me that the. How did, like, how did I say? How did I say it? Did, whereas, like, I'm like, I'm, I'm just gonna trust. Like, we did like dozens of different versions of every single line. Mm -hmm. It's gonna sound like him regardless. Yeah. 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 But everyone is always like, I just just a warning. I'm not gonna say it like Yeah. And I'm like I'm gonna be exactly the same <laughs> way. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm trying to I wanna get some good um some good like uh ones two other characters. I had a couple mm -hmm. written down, but now I'm getting I don't want to also get out of here and then feel like Regret I missed. Wanna, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I want to jump back. Yeah. Um. I mean, the the neon one gets a lot of people um, ooh, thinking what, it's really cute. What's the neon one? Do you know it? He, he goes, uh... <laughs> "Hey, neon, Mosh kind of likes you." <laughs> <laughs> that one gets a lot of people. That um, one is good. And they also like that he uh, he's one of the only people that thanks Sage, like explicitly thanks her for being healed. Oh, yeah. He's like, thank you, Sage. <laughs> <laughs> he is pretty funny, huh? Yeah, it's just it's just like chaotic, uh, chaotic energy, chaotic positivity. Um, oh, he calls he says, damn, Phoenix. Uh, damn, Phoenix is the goat. Damn, Phoenix is the goat. <laughs> I love I I didn't realize some of these where it's just like I don't know any other character who would say someone's the goat like yeah he's got a lot of like really fresh slang and a lot yeah. of like really current vocabulary mm. which is also another thing I really liked about him like we'll see how it goes as the game continues and whether we'll have to update some of that but um but I just really love that he's connecting with a lot of younger players um how how cool was it for you to see this like see the character come to life for the first time like whether it was like the first time you saw him like animated in something mm. how was that for you so the first time i got to see him in any sort of like actual three-dimensional movement um was kind of surreal for me it was I don't know, part way into the process of actually recording him, uh, they were showing me like progress. Mm. Um, 
and it was it was strange because it was probably the first moment where I thought like I wonder if the voice fits like I wonder I had to tr I had to trust in that moment like they they got what they like and they they like it and people will like it and that's okay because I think that was the first moment where I was like I, I'd never I literally never uh seen like a lead role of mine in a video game in this way so because mm -hmm. I played a lot of smaller parts but this was the first time where we were spending a lot of time with with one character so I just kind of felt in that moment like this is so cool but also this is terrifying <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, uh, and just getting to see him and, and I didn't even really get to see at that point, like what he looked like. Cause it was all from his POV. It was in game. Oh, um, okay. So I got to see like his hands and, and things like that and the abilities. Oh, um, that's really cool. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I imagine that could be such a surreal feeling to, especially working on for something for so long. I don't know how in that timeline. I don't remember exactly where it fell in the timeline, um, but I do know that, I mean, what was most wild to me is that he did, I mean, like all of them, changed many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. uh, appearance and design and all of that, like it, it starts to slowly fall into place over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't, I didn't even know what his final hair color was going to be until really close to the end mm -hmm. uh, because you know we were going through a lot of different options mm -hmm. but uh but that was another thing i really liked actually and i think i don't know if that was my input i really doubt it i think a lot of us happen to be thinking the same way because it's a collaborative team mm -hmm. but i remember early on saying like you know part of what it is to be mexican american in la is that your music tastes are all over the fucking map. Like, you listen to oldies from the 50s and 60s, you listen to current rap and hip hop, you listen to punk rock from the 80s and 90s. Like, that's what you grow up around because it's such a melting pot, this city. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they kind of picked up on that. Like, he's not just one thing, he can be all of the things. Yeah. That's great. That's amazing. Um, I do want to get like one or two more voice signs and then I'll get you sure, out of sure. here. Um, this one's a kind of a, a longer one. Are you good with me saying it? Or do you want me to like type in chat or something? Tell me it and we'll see. Um, <laughs> you want KJ's shoes? Chale, dude, you don't even wear shoes. You want KJ's shoes? Chale, dude, you don't even wear shoes. <laughs> and then this one's calling chamber a cornball. Oh God. <laughs> I remember this one. This one has been uh, debated. There have been thesis papers written on it. This one has been, uh, you know, archived in the papers. Library of Congress. Uh. Cornball. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. People well, freaked out when they heard that. They were like, "Really, really." <laughs> I, I appreciate you giving me the time to talk to you. I absolutely had a blast. Um, absolutely. Uh, I love learning about everything. And uh, again, your voice and your performance for Gecko was fantastic. And I appreciate you and everyone at Riot for, for bringing this character to life. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you for reaching out and for your enthusiasm and for spreading the love. Mm. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. Um, yeah, your links will be down. Are are you in this streamly signing? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be. I think that's May twelfth, oh. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So you know, you can look it up on streamly. But me and a, a big portion of the cast is gonna be doing an event pretty yes. soon. We're all signing stuff. I I have one. I have two. The other one's over there. But I have this one for Steve Bloom. It's a yes. yeah, just my absolute prized possession. <laughs> It's got, it's got my name, so if you guys want one of these for any of the other, there's there's quite a bit of people, um, and I gotta get I gotta get more. I already have one ordered, and I I gotta make sure to get some more. Um, so that will be down in the description as well, so you guys can go check that out. Is there anything you you have coming out or you have that you want to say? Um, yeah, just you know, join us on Streamily. We're gonna be signing prints. All of us have a ton of stuff, um, and uh, I've got. Uh, if you're a fan of anime, I just joined the cast of Tokyo Revengers mm. on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. I'm going to be playing the main villain in the next season. Ooh. 
Well, thank you, and um, everyone go check it, uh, check everyone out, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.